other thing that we're going to celebrate today is the fact that it's October and it's our spooky month um, of all sorts of fun things. And it's Ezra's birthday month, so we should also celebrate that. <laughs> uh, if I didn't introduce my co-host, he's chill, so I'm going to leave it for now. Um, but he'll probably be reading up here with me at some point. So we're going to start off um, with a reading from Sarah. <laughs> slightly abridged version of The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered deep and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of some, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my book surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, namely here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor intruding, entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor intruding, entrance at my chamber door. This is it, and nothing more." Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly, you'll forgive this, I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here, here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep as sweet as darkness cheering, long I stood, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what this red is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven, raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. Perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling, then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and sh shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on this, this night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear this course so plainly. Though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on his Placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken, broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it uttered is only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his song one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh quaff this kind of penny, and forget the lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, 
it, said I, came an evil, stop it still, it's bird or devil. By that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if with, within the distant Aiden, it shall clasp the sainted maiden, whom the angel's name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angel's name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked at starting, get thee back into the tempest, and the night's determined roar. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.